Okay, so our topic today, using Pro to get a PHP job. Okay, so um, I think the first thing we should start asking is why this topic? You know, Ian actually came in here and he was kind of wondering, what is that you guys doing? <laughs> okay, you know, so you know, so after after six months absence, Ian actually comes back and he thinks that we become heretic. We become seditious. <laughs> okay. Now I'm just imagining this stuff. Now it's just a look at it. Yeah. Okay. I'm seeing PHP on the screen there. I have questions. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, there's a there's a real there's a logic to this particular topic itself. Okay. Yes, we are SB Pearl. Okay. But okay, there is something that there is something of interest in this particular area here, which is we're interested in jobs. It's like you know, I think like. 10%, um, 20% of people here, uh, they actually mentioned something that they're looking for a job or will be looking for a job. You know, jobs are very important. We like to put food on a table. Okay. It's, we don't program for free. Oh, I, yes. I do. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it'd be kind of nice to program for free. You know, programming's fun, but, okay, we need to put food on the table. It's expensive living here. It's just freaking expensive. So, yes, we need jobs. Okay. Now, PHP does, does, does do some things better than Perl. Okay, I have to admit that. Um, but before I start singing the praises of PHP, I should actually point out to, well, actually before we start getting to this um, Pro and PHP thing, um, we should actually look at, look at something with um, in terms of opportunities there. PHP is actually related to Pro. Um, okay, PHP is a simplified derivative of Pro itself. Now, if you take a look, now if you actually take Pro and you actually apply to P, take Pro and you learn PHP, um, you can actually have another set of possibilities for jobs. Okay, if you take a, if you ever go to Craigslist and do a keyword search, I did this keyword search on Craigslist. You'll find that, well, you type in something in Perl and type something in PHP, well, you all of a sudden it's like, okay, there is approximately maybe twice as much opportunities in PHP as there are in Perl. Um, you're basically doubling your opportunities if you use your Perl experience to study PHP. Okay, now, I did actually now I did actually start in Perl, and I did do some PHP programming at SanJose.com. Uh, it was because I actually kind of leveraged my Perl understanding to learn PHP. Um, after SanJose.com, I went back to Perl. Um, there are okay, there are some things I can't seem to remember about my PHP experience because it's been a few years. So don't be surprised if you catch me on a few areas, you know, about PHP. It's like it's okay. So I'm just kind of warning you. Okay. Okay, yes, PHP is a simplified derivative of Perl. Now, one thing I discovered is that practically every PHP function has a Perl equivalent. If you're an experienced Perl web developer, you can learn PHP in 24 hours. Me, I learned PHP in eight hours. And that was being slow. I was being kind of lazy, being really casual. Um, okay, I think I could have done a little bit quicker. Eight hours was... Okay, a rather slow amount of time. That's that's for me. But, but I was really I was really quite into doing pro web development. That was really fun for me. How, how deep was that understanding after eight hours? <laughs> okay, it was actually was it in. Enough to get the job done, or was it were you, were you a PHP guy after eight hours? I considered myself to be a PHP guy. Okay, okay. Um, it was actually the, the the way I did a test is that the way I did that particular test is that I wrote a CRUD application in PHP. And that only took eight hours. Because okay. all I just did was, I think, something in Perl. I looked at the PHP documentation. Okay, and it's like, aha, that's the name of the function over here. That's the name of the function over here. It's like, okay, that's, that's pretty simple. So substitute function name here. And then I could program PHP. Not too hard for me. It's like, it's... So it was a really, it was a very easy transition for me because it's, there's so much similarities between the two languages. Think well and translate PHP. Yes. Yeah, that's right. It's it's because of the there is the languages are so closely related. Okay, it's I'm I'm kind of surprised that most people don't really talk about the languages being related to each other, but it is true. It's um, there is just that much of a similarity. Actually, over time, what we're seeing is that PHP is becoming more like Perl. Okay. We see certain things like, say, in 5.0, there's this thing called XML Simple Element. It's, that's say it's kind of a bad redo of XML Simple, but at least we're kind of moving toward a direction. Um, there's also uh, a feature called Auto Load, which is, Auto Load is, I have to say that I think that only 
Pro language has auto load. And then I'll and then in PHP you start seeing this thing called auto load. Uh, 5.1, there is this thing called PDO, which is very nearly the same as DBI. Uh, DBI is at okay, my my opinion, DBI is really set Perl as being you know a good database interfacing language. Um, PHP kind of knows that and they kind of made something called PDO. Um, this PDO itself is also that's um, it's being used as a basis of Zen framework, or at least that particular syntax is being used as the um, in the Zen framework itself. That's Zen framework is one of the um, one of the standard uh, libraries for, or at least one of the common libraries used for PHP itself. Uh, 5.3, we started seeing some work with lambda functions, closure, namespaces. Okay, so this these sort of things are not specific to Perl, but you can but these things actually make PHP more like Perl because. PHP has these features, Na lambda functions, closures, namespace. Um, then in 5.4, we're we got we're seeing a Perl-like array syntax in um, uh, being incorporated into PHP itself. Okay, so here's how I'm going to summarize Perl versus PHP. Okay, we can actually go home after. Uh, after looking at this slide, okay, for one, two, we can actually go home right now, and that, and uh, I, I think we'll be satisfied with the understanding. Okay, anyone want to go home now? Anybody? Okay, there's a door right out there, and I can stop you. Okay, okay. So anyway, I'm, I'll try not to bore you for the rest of the rest of the session after this slide. Okay, but this is the summary of um, of the entire th of the entire um, difference between Perl and PHP. Perl. Good for power users, not so good for beginners. PHP, um, they kind of make things harder for a power user, but they're really great for beginners. Okay, and this is probably the best way to describe the difference between Perl and PHP. So next time a person actually comes up to you and asks, how does your Perl language compare to PHP, just think of this. Okay, so what's gonna happen to this is that everything, I'm just going to bore you to tears with the rest of my slides, okay. Okay, well, let's, look at, let's actually look at, at a bit more of the Perl versus PHP sort of, um, sort of approach to doing things. There's a certain attitude within the communities. Um, in the Perl community, I have to say I'm kind of sorry about this, but there is, uh, there's a certain bit of elitism within the Perl community. Um, no. It's basically... <laughs> 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 okay, yes, I mean, you have so many good programmers that they, you know, they, they don't really treat the beginners very well. Um, Okay, it, it sometimes feels like they want you to go away if you don't know how to program, which is, I actually had a teacher that actually almost said that. It's, okay, he said that some people are meant to program. I was like, <laughs> he was really rough. I mean, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Now, okay, now on the PHP side, there is a different attitude, which is, Non-programmers are welcome. They're very open toward this community that, you know, maybe they didn't have, maybe people didn't have a degree in computer science. Maybe they started out as art majors. Um, maybe they're just graphic designers who want to get a little scripting done. Okay, well that's, PHP opens up their arms to this, you know, to this large community of the unwashed masses. Okay, um, also in the pro community, there's this attitude of there is more than one way to do it, which is which is good if you're a power user. Um, PHP is a bit more focused, a bit more narrow, um, limiting ways. Typically, one way to do it. Okay, typically one way to do it makes it a uh, bit more beginner friendly because you only have to study something one way. Okay, whereas with there's more than one way to do it, you really have to read the 200 page. Learning Pearl or Beginning Pearl, whichever beginning book you pick out, because um, one of the most ghastly things you can start doing is start typing in Pearl and they don't realize you did it the wrong way. Um, okay, you'll be very upset with yourself or actually other Pearl programs you upset with you and start criticizing your code. Okay, um, that's Pearl itself is can be a bit overwhelming simply because there's more than one way to do it and you have to know the 20 different ways of doing it before you can pick the best of the 20 ways for a particular situation. It makes it a bit more intimidating. Um, I mean, you feel a bit more intimidated when you first start programming Perl. PHP, it's a bit different. 
read a little bit of documentation, you code a little. Read a bit, little bit of documentation, you code a little. It's a bit more, um, a bit more friendly. It's uh, you get a little bit, you read a little bit, you get rewarded. You read a little bit, you get rewarded. It's it's more of this sort of thing where it's you get you kind of ramp up in small little increments instead of actually having to read through the 200 page book. Okay, now there is actually one big strong point to PHP uh, for people who are just beginning, which is um, there is better web hosting. It's, well, what is $5 shared hosting and it's already set up. What's the pro site have to do? Well, it almost requires a VPS or some sort of cloud account or you know something like that. Um, and you have to be your own sysadmin, you have to actually install Ubuntu or Debian or Fedora. Okay, you have to actually install this CPAN module, you have to do sudo apt-get. Uh, I mean, it's, that's, that's a fair amount of work. I mean, if you're like a graphic designer, you can't do this stuff. So PHP, is a, it's rather, it's, it's very beginner friendly. Um, also, in terms of web hosting, in terms of getting yourself set up, um, if you're going to step, set up your own pro uh, web hosting. I mean, if you're going to set, start installing stuff, you have to know what you're doing. It's like, okay, do we install Mod Pro? Do we uh, see, is it going to be Apache? Is it going to be Plaque? Calist? Um, because most, I mean, yes, you can actually just do this plain CGI stuff, and most of the web hosting companies do have just plain CGI, but CGI is a bit dated, so people want to, you know, custom design their own particular web stack, and, you know, either choose you know, Calors and Modulicious and just install this and install that. A um, lot of choices to be made. And that's great for power users, but sometimes choices maybe not that amenable to most beginners. PHP, well, it's already set up. You, did, you really don't have to be your own system administrator. Um, okay, there's typically just one way to set it up and it's pretty much the same. Because of, there is only typically one way to set up, um, there's, there's been an explosion of web apps over time that use this um, you know, single sort of setup. It's um, PHP, there's typically one way to set up and they, people have been building a lot of web apps on top of it. Pro-side, because it's so diverse in terms of what you can set up, um, the only really popular uh, web apps for Pro are CGI apps. I think probably the most notable would probably be Bugzilla. Um, unfortunately, this is one thing that kind of hampers uh, Perl itself, which is it's just that the set of possible web stacks that uh, that you can actually uh, create is so innumerable that it becomes very complicated for to actually create um, a web app that's good for all Perl users. But on PHP also, you have so many frameworks like Cake and. Uh, Yeah. No, there are many, you know? so yeah. if you ask somebody to choose a framework, PHP yeah. is a confusion. PHP, yes, there's a lot of web frameworks in PHP. Um, okay, Codeigniter, Cake, um, dozens and dozens of other ones. So there is some open source, a lot of people use a lot of frameworks, so it's difficult to say which one to use. Yeah, that's actually true from that perspective. Um, but in terms of so simple, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. You don't need a lot of that. Yeah. You don't need the framework, then it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you yeah, if you actually happen to use one of those web frameworks, it does does add an additional layer of complexity and does actually add additional work in terms of installation. Um, that being said, there is a number of web apps out there, like say WordPress and okay Drupal and Joomla, and they're kind of like basically, they're, well, they're just PHP that's been kind of basically custom coded from the ground up. Okay, so, and they make it really easy to install. Actually, a lot of, and in fact, a lot of web apps out there of, um, with PHP, it, they don't really have any programming involved. It's like someone actually, from a graphic, graphic design perspective, they just install it. And they, and all they just do is maintain content with Drupal. Um, they're not programming any plugins. They're just mean. They're just using it to be useful. You know, to them it's okay. They're just. They're not. To them, it's code is irrelevant. They they just want to have something that they can be productive with. Okay. Now, um, in comparing the source code repositories of Perl versus PHP, 
Uh, Pearl, we have Seapan. Seapan. Ah, yes, yeah, so we all love Seapan. Source code mod. Okay, it's a great place to actually put source code. Pear, that's the official PHP source code repository. Um, Cpan hands down beats Pear. Okay, that's twenty six dollars in distributions. Um, actually, it's, if you subdivide it into the individual modules themselves, I think it's a hundred ten thousand modules. Um, okay, but to make it a kind of a fair comparison, we compare the distributions versus the modules in PHP. Pear itself, 590. Um, why is it so few? Well, the reason why it's so so hard to get a module published in Pear is because it's almost like it's almost like getting your stuff published by the Central Committee of the Soviet Politburo. It's just, or it's like it's it's kind of like have, trying to get your permit through the city council. <laughs> it's just hard. It's like they're so controlling. It's they just, in their mind, they don't want to have diversity. They want to have one. They just want to have one of everything. And the, and, and if your stuff is too similar, or I don't know what the, I don't know how they decide. There's, they, some of they, whether they do, they're just killing all the interest in publishing your own stuff. I, I should actually say that uh, within the last year, someone actually came, someone actually came up with an alternative pair, and it's, it's in the code Composer, and the name, in a particular repository there is called Packagist. There's about 6,500 packages there. Um, I don't know that much about it. It came really recently. There's a, there's a bit of interest in there. Okay, and I think it's actually kind of getting PHP onto the right track. They don't quite have all the, you know, all the ducks in a row. The documentation is pretty bad. They don't really have testing that, uh, that gets the different modules, the different packages work with each other. Um, they're having some growing pains, but I think it's actually a step in the right direction. It's much better than Pear. Pear just, I, I, they just really, the, the PHP, people, PHP people really just messed up everything in Pear. Pear is just bad. Okay, now there is a certain, there's a certain approach with code complexity with uh, Perl versus PHP. In Perl, we put the complexity in CPAN. You got some code, put it in CPAN. Well, PHP actually took a different sort of perspective. Let's package everything in the PHP binary. Okay, which sounds rather odd because, yeah, doesn't that sound kind of inflexible? It's like you have to recompile things if you want something, what an optional sort of uh, MD5 thing involved. Uh, yeah, that's that's true. It's um, it's a bit more, um, it's a bit more limiting. But at the same time, it's it makes everything more self-contained. So you can just you can install seven options. Say we're going to install most everything and going from one, one web hosting company to another, it's pretty much the same PHP from one web hosting company to another. It's, so it is a bit more limiting, but at the same time, you get a bit more standardization involved. Okay, there's another sort of um, opinion in terms of where you put your complexity of the language. So in terms of language complexity, Perl self took the, took the viewpoint of, let's actually have more grammar. Yeah, you know, kind of like what a linguist would in, would think of. You know, it's, um, I mean, Pro is a is a language designed by a linguist. Let's express ourselves. Let's have more grammar. More grammar means less functions. Well, PHP they took the different approach, which is less grammar, more functions. Let's look at an example of this. So in Pro, we have the function known as sort. Sort dir, sort does a is very flexible. PHP to do the same thing as sort. We have, oh, I don't know, a dozen different functions. Okay, you know, you sort um, first to last, lap, okay, you sort high, lowest to highest, high, highest to lowest. Uh, you can sort according to keys, according to values. Uh, you can sort um, according to case difference or case indifferent. Um, there's a whole multitude of different ways to do sort. Okay, there's actually one of these, I forgot which one it is, but one of these sorts actually uses a user-defined function. Um, so if you want to, you can actually have something that's the most flexible, but unfortunately it looks so ugly that you kind of wish you weren't using that sort function. Okay, Perl itself, there's just one function. PHP, multiple functions. Um, this, is, this is just one single example. There's a number of examples where PHP has an explosion of functions to do the same thing that Pro does. Okay, it's um, it's it's a bit aggravating for, for people who are going from Pro to PHP. 
Um, but you can still you can still code in you know a reasonably productive manner. Okay, now in terms of differences between objects, I have to say that uh, currently right now with Moose, Perl is now in the driver's seat. Perl, the new object system for Perl, Moose, it you know hands down I have to say that Perl right now is actually they're just doing something really well with Moose. I mean it's just a fantastic system. I won't talk much more about this because I am doing a presentation in a few months, so you should come along for that presentation. Okay, you can learn all about Moose. PHP, Java-like objects. Okay, well that's that's pretty reasonable. Most other languages are kind of like Java-like objects. Okay, there is actually one feature I really appreciate about PHP that I wish we had in Pro. Copy on write. Yes, there is. Um, um, who knows about? Okay, who knows what copy on write is? Let's let's check our understanding here. Copy on write. Who wants to volunteer to talk about po copy on write? Anyone? Someone? So it's a shared original memory it can be shared by different processes from the single process. And while they read this sound variable, they still access the single single code. But once one of the processes tries to change the variable, the open write web handles Yes, that's right. Okay. Um, that's why it makes sense for using a to all the modules. Yes, that's right. Okay. Usually, usually this is very well applied in the uh, virtualization, in the snapshots and all, when you take the data and uh, they use it to copy and read. In fact, there is a format called QCOM, which is used in virtualization. Yes, okay. Yeah, now the implementation of copyright that you have within PHP is a little bit different from what's been described there. That's more of an operating system sort of level. But um, what you typically see with copy on write is when you pass parameters, those parameters, you know, normally when you're passing parameters, there's, there's a question there. Pass by value or pass by reference. What is it going to be? Pass by value or pass by reference. And, okay, and that's what we learn in our computer science curriculum. Okay, well, there's another choice here, which is copy on write. And this is supported by the PHP language itself. Okay, you pass the parameter, and it looks like you're passing by value. In actuality, once you're inside that function and you start making modifications to it, you get a copy on write. It will make a copy of that particular data right there on the spot so that you can modify it inside that function and you don't, don't have to disturb the original copy. Okay, it's, um, it's a pretty useful sort of feature. There is actually a bit of this within Perl itself. It's... But it's in a really obscure scenario, and it's so obscure, I won't even bother describing it. You can try looking up if you want to, but yes, there, there is actually a one really obscure scenario under which this does actually occur. Um, okay, but it's so small, it's not even, it's almost not there. Okay, now, uh, well, let's actually take a look at this PHP grammar. Let's, uh, let's start by looking at a Hello World program. Okay, it's, um, we've been talking about PHP so far. Let's, let's try a little bit of this PHP. Okay, so we have this Hello World program, and the way PHP works is that you have a PHP tag, and you can say things like echo hello world. Okay, and that, that will put a little bit of PHP, I mean, they'll, they'll, I'll put a string inside some HTML. Okay, that sounds pretty simple. That's what PHP is really designed to do. Put strings inside, um, inside static, HTML. That's that's his purpose. However, things get to be a bit more complex once you once you start doing um, if else. This is uh, really aggravating to uh, um, to a number of programmers if you start doing PHP. Let's take an example. So we had this stuff with if logged in, and okay, if you if logged in, then you output the stuff with log out. Okay, else log in. Well. This stuff is, how can I put it? Ugly, hard to read. I mean, how do you line up the braces? I mean, it's, this is just so hard. Okay, I, I mean, I have to read, I mean, the PHP tags are getting in my way. I can't read this stuff, this is so hard. And then you have this ending brace at the very end. Good grief, I mean, I, this is so hard for me to read. This is, ho this is so, so difficult. Well, okay, this is not the end of my, this is not the end of my pain. Okay, let's take a look at this example, okay. 
so remember that variable logged in okay what we do here is set logged in to true okay and then later on we say include login button well that that variable there, logged in equals true that's visible within login button dot php actually let's look at the let's look at the previous function there uh, login dot login button dot php so that login variable that's the one we're referring to yeah so let's go back to the html yes okay it's what's the term global it's a <laughs> um, yeah it's um, it's a little bit an embarrassing slide <laughs> Okay, but if you're trying to include some sort of HTML component, this is the way to do it. It's, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's a bit embarrassing, I have to say that. Um, yeah, okay, um, okay, um, well, before we start talking about how you would do this in Perl, just for sake of comparison, we should mention that PHP and Perl do have different ways of doing templating. Um, the primary way of, I mean, it's in Perl we have three different choices. CGI, um, okay, embed script within HTML, and the third one is, actually, okay, the embedding script in HTML. That one, I have to say, I think that um, the, probably the biggest one there would probably be Mason, the one that does it the best. And there's a third choice in Perl where you basically, instead of embedding script, you embed a third-party grammar. Uh, Third-party grammar is is basically solely for the purpose of presentation. Okay, no database access, no socket operations, no OS anything. It's just a third-party grammar, and all it just does is just display um, display a variable. Okay, that's really just purpose. That I mean, that's what template toolkit actually does. Um, okay, in PHP. If we try using the equivalent there, yes, you can do things like print statements. Um, the chief way of actually templating in PHP is to use PHP tags. There is also another alternative known as Smarty Templates. Um, I should mention that Pro itself, um, Pro itself does not use Mason as its chief means. Uh, well, in, uh, sorry, the Pro community has has not decided Mason as being the the key technology to doing templating. The Pro community has, for the most part, decided template toolkit is actually the key way of doing things. It's, it's a bit you can achieve a much better, better level of abstraction using template toolkit. The sacrifice, of course, is it what? There's also HTML template. HTML Yes, more than one way to do it. Uh, yeah, I should mention that there's. Okay, I only mentioned two of them. There's actually like a couple dozen, maybe several dozen other means of doing templating. Okay, I can't mention all of them in the, within my presentation today. Um, anyway, the two most, the two, probably the two most notable means of doing templating would probably be Mason and Template Toolkit. They represent the two lines of thought in the community uh, about how templating should work. Um, okay, PHP itself, they also have something that's sort of similar to Template Toolkit. They call it Smarty Templates, but most PHP people hate that stuff. Okay. Yes, you get more abstraction, but then they say, why would I want to do that? I can type in PHP. I don't want to learn anything new. I just want to type in some scripting code. Okay, it's, you know, to them it doesn't really bother them that they have access to the database or the sockets or the file handles or stuff like that. And, okay, um, okay. you know, to them it's like... Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so they can't understand anything about templating system itself, templating system. It just, it just doesn't make any sense to them. It's like, okay, so anyway, I want to compare, in order to get kind of like an apples to apples comparison, I, I wanted to, I'm going to be pairing up Mason against PHP. So I have an idea about how exactly would Perl do it versus PHP. Okay, so we have this, um, we call this login button.mi. That's kind of like a Mason, that's a Mason component itself. And here, oh, we have parameters we can supply. Okay, we have a parameter here called login, and add a second parameter known as username. Um, if some of you have actually no Moose, yes, it does look a lot like Moose, right? Okay, that's because Mason is built on top of Moose. Okay. Okay, then, yeah. Then we look at the actual code for, okay, um, testing. Okay, so we have this if, case, if, 
we have the if statement, if logged in. You know, and then you do the log out button thing, else, um, okay, log, okay, uh, okay, well, one of turn to is the log out button, or uh, else, the login button. As you can see here, we can actually, we have a much better ability to see the actual alignment of the braces. The braces are kind of lining up, it's a little bit cleaner, and the ending brace, we can actually see the ending brace. The ending brace is distinctive, we can see that. Okay, now let's see how exactly this thing is actually called. So, um, yes, we also have a logged in variable here. Um, but when we call login button.mi, we supply a parameter. Logged in is logged in. Okay, that's the way to do it. It's uh, none of the stuff where global variables are kind of passing around values, just make things a bit cleaner. Okay, so moving on, let's actually talk a little bit about the grammar itself. Okay, um, there is one thing in Perl I wish we really had in PHP. I have to tell you, it's okay, strict mode saves my life. Okay, I'm a really bad typist. Strict mode. If you mistype something, it will, okay, Perl will tell you about it if you have strict mode turned on. PHP, we don't have that ability. It's just string equals hello world. Okay, you mistype it, too bad. You're dead. Okay, you won't find out about the error until we until it's put in production and people will hate your, hate your guts. Okay, now functions. Functions themselves is, let's say that PHP, it's a bit, it's a bit easier to actually do functions, uh, define functions in PHP. The, it's a bit more conventional. It's a, it follows a certain orthodoxy, you know, function, foobar, dollar $A, dollar $B. Okay, uh, Perl, it's a bit more, it's a bit more obtuse, you know, um, where you actually have to grab dollar at and assign it into dollar a and dollar b. Okay, it's it's something. It's a bit quirky, but pro people get used to it. Unfortunately for beginners, it's it's not something they really like. Beginners don't like this sort of stuff. Um, power users, we kind of put up with stuff like this because we're we just put up with it. <laughs> However, there is one area in which um, pro actually retains a returns the retains an edge and that's with name parameters um, so far with this particular perspective here it looks about the same here uh, get addresses you know state is California county is Alameda it looks about the same for both Pro and PHP okay it's PHP adds oh man I'm missing I'm missing in parentheses over there ah oh, ah oh. <laughs> Oh, okay, that's what I get for not testing my code. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, so anyway, um, okay, yeah, so PHP does actually insert an extra keyword there, but beyond that, they're mostly the same. Okay, however, okay, Perl does have something called params validate, where you can actually validate the actual parameters coming in. Okay, that's something you don't see in PHP. It's probably because PHP for a very long time, they only have pair, and pair itself does not have name, anything to validate name parameters. It'd be kind of nice if they have that. Okay, but if you're working with PHP, this is one of the things you gotta put it with. Okay, that nice thing called params validate, you don't have it. You got it, if you work in Pro, you got it. PHP, they don't got it. regular expression. Perl is one of those few languages in which the regular expressions are built directly into the grammar itself. Uh, for a language like PHP, you have to use a function. You have to type in, you know, preg match, and this particular, what does this regular expression do? Um, what does that preg stand for? Preg? Ah. Perl regular Perl. expression. Yes, yes that's right. <laughs> 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 yeah, so Perl pioneered a lot of really cool stuff, and okay, unfortunately, not every language gets it right when they try re-implementing it. It's uh, it just looks a bit ugly in in PHP. Yeah, so if you're trying to look up, um, trying to do a match against any string that begins with R, ends with double S, and has an O in the middle, okay, well, it looks better in Perl than in PHP. By the way, this is a Jay Leno thing. Okay, he was he was giving a hint to one of the contestants, and 
uh, one of the hints was that, okay, uh, the question was, who, um, who sold the first American flag? And, okay, of course we know the answer is Betsy Ross. Okay, and the contestant there, he had a lot of trouble figuring out who the, who the person was. So Jay Leno says, the last name begins with R, ends with double S, and has an O in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> the guy still couldn't figure it out. <laughs> What are they teaching these days? Yes. <laughs> okay, so let's look at another example of regex. Now, here's an example of regex in which we're trying to pick up, um, we're trying to pick up something from within the regex itself. Okay, it's, well, we're trying to look at a particular string, submit, item, and we're trying to figure out the numerical ID there. Um, in PHP, I have to say that it just looks cumbersome. It's... I don't know, I, I don't even understand how do you came up with the system here. It's like, okay, you have to actually supply an actual array variable into pregmatch so you can retrieve the numerical ID. It's, it's cumbersome. Um, Perl, it's, it's quite a bit cleaner. People accuse Perl of being line noise. Uh, well, I think in this particular example, it's, I think PHP is a bit more line noisy than, uh, than Perl. If you know the extra grammar associated, I mean, you know that special grammar within Perl, you can be very productive. You can see things and understand, understand things in a very concise manner. Oops, sorry. Okay, now, one of the other things that we should talk about is lambda functions, which is, it's a really cool feature that we have in, um, in Perl. It came from Lisp, Lisp pioneered lambda functions, and um, other languages have been influenced by it. Um, in this example here, we're, we're going to be looking through an array of numbers and we're going to be picking up anything that, any number that's greater than two. Okay, that's fine. Um, it's a bit more, um, it's a bit more verbose in PHP. You have to do array filter, input, and you have to supply your function right there in a the spot. Uh, Perl, it's, well, what can I say? It's a bit simpler. Okay, so you just do grep, grep dollar earn a score greater than two and supply the list of numbers. Okay, that's that's pretty simple. Um, you have to first learn the particular grammar, but once you get it, your code is much more concise. Okay, let's look at another example of the lambda function. Um, actually, I have to, I'll call this one the old lambda function because PHP has been trying to do lambda functions more than one time. This is the, I think this is actually the oldest version of their idea of a lambda function. So if you take a look at this thing, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to transform every element of, a, of an array of numbers by cubing them. So every, every number would be cubed. In PHP you have this thing called array map. So you say array map and then you have the function and then you have the array of numbers. Okay, um, that's, okay, I have to say this is really hard to use simply because when you actually see the word cube, you have to actually run around the rest of the source code and look for a function named cube. And then you read what that, what the cube function does. And then you run back to the original line of code that you're looking at. Okay, it's, this just makes coding hard. I and mean, it just, you know, you have to run back and forth in the same program. I mean, that's, that's not easy. It just makes things just, it makes life hard. What do you do in Perl? Uh, well, we just do map, and we just do the cube of, and we just do dollar underscore times dollar underscore times dollar underscore. One to five, okay, that's, that's really easy. Yes, you get this magic variable known as dollar underscore, but, okay, but if you get used to it, then it's, uh, it's pretty reasonable. Okay, now um, I'm going to get into this thing about um, list and hashes over here. There is, um, the way that PHP, well, initially, PHP and Perl aren't all that much different. Um, yes, yeah, so you get this thing with array and you have um, a list of strings. PHP 5.4, they actually add a new syntax for, for arrays here. They, it looks sort of like Perl. Um, so you don't have to use the array keyword. Instead, you can use square brackets. Okay, that kind of comes in handy. Uh, Perl self. Okay, yeah, I should actually mention that um, one of the alternative ways of just defining a string literal is using quote words. So that QW, that's quote word. Um, this works pretty well if you don't have any spaces within the, 
uh, within the strings themselves. Okay, now we get to the topic of the associative array. Um, in, in Perl, we call this hash. Okay, in PHP, we call this array. Wait, wait, that doesn't make any sense. Didn't we just use array in the last slide there for list? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Um, okay, well, why are we using the same keyword over here? Well, the reason being is because in PHP, you use the same keyword for both list and hash. It's, um, I think the, I think probably a good term would be, it's called a super array. Okay, it's one size fits all. Everything is just done all in one. So none of the stuff where you have separate um, sigils for hash versus list, everything is just done all in the same place here. Um, so you notice this thing with, um, so in Perl you have to know, you, you have to remember that for, um, let's, let's go back to list. So you have to remember that for list, you have to use the at sign. For hash, you have to use the percent sign. It's just something you have to remember. And there's a few tricks you can do with Perl, you can't do with PHP, you know, certain things like, um, you can just lay out all the, uh, all the strings, almost like it's a list, and it will be interpreted in like it's a hash there, you know, so city Dallas, state Dallas, you don't, the fat arrows are actually optional there. You can just put in commas and it'll be exactly the same. Okay, you can also do the same thing with quote word. It's like quote word city Dallas, state Texas. Okay, there is, I do have to say that there is one thing that PHP I do kind of like better. It's the keys are ordered in PHP. So those keys in your associative array, they're actually ordered in PHP. Pearl, they're actually unordered. Okay, there are many times in which I wish the Okay, yes, yes, I know there's, you can actually, you can make them ordered if you want to in Perl. There's something called tie ix hash. You can do that, but you have to do some extra work just to make them ordered. In PHP, they're always ordered. Okay, which makes things, well, it makes things easy for beginners because when a beginner puts something inside of a hash, he expects it to come out in the same order. Not like this stuff where it comes out in like crazy ordering all the place. Oh, that's the reasoning? Oh, okay, for the purpose of security? Okay, that's good for security. Okay, beginners quite wouldn't understand, but we would. <laughs> okay. Now, I have to say, this is one part about Pro that's a bit aggravating, which is the references. Ah, okay. Um, okay, yes, you have to, uh, have to remember a reference to a list, a reference to a hash. And... And in t notation there is different. You have to use you have to use square brackets for a list reference. You have to use uh, braces for a hash reference. Yes. It's yeah. I'm sorry. It's just, it's just that it just makes it makes life a bit harder. Um, pro programmers, we just kind of put up with it. Um, this is again. This is pro. This is a pro only thing. It's PHP. There is no thing with these reference to re reference list or reference to hash. It's it's all the same exact grammar. Okay, and we see over here, this actually comes in handy when you're doing nested arrays. Because in PHP, okay, all you just say is arrays, is array, array inside, um, okay, it, all you have to just put an array within an array and it will just behave the way you expect it. In Perl, you have to be careful about what you type in. Okay, you have to put a list reference within a list, a hash reference within a list. If you forget to do it, if you instead put parentheses in there, well, yeah, it's going to flatten out. It's um, this is really this is really hard for beginners. It's I have to say that beginners beginners hate this sort of behavior. It's it's be very beginner unfriendly. Okay, man, I, I can understand that there are some situations in which you like this behavior, but for the most part, it does confuse a lot of beginners. Um, Okay, for us power users, we kind of get used to it, so we don't normally think about it for, but from the perspective of those non-programmers, they, they just don't like this sort of stuff. Okay, now there's also, um, I should also comment, okay, there's also a difference between a comment syntax, between Perl and PHP. P 
PHP's multi-line comment syntax, I have to say it's a bit more conventional. I, you know, Pro itself had this really odd thing with, you know, this uh, pod, well, I'm not sure, it, it's just kind of a weird thing, is where, where the pod documentation is used for multi-line comment. Um, it's just something that, um, that the Pro language has. It's, it's a bit quirky. Okay, it is. Okay. Well, Pro for quite some time has had namespaces, and this is one thing I really do appreciate about Pro because I can just name things without having to worry about conflicts with other modules written by other authors. PHP, they're kind of introducing this thing with namespaces. This is a recent innovation, but I have to say their syntax is awful. Um, okay, why are they using why are they using backslash? Why? Okay, isn't that isn't that the pathing? Um, isn't that like what Windows paths look like? I was like, what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why the PHP people chose this particular grammar to represent namespace. Um, maybe they wanted to be different. Um, I, I, I have to say this is different in a really bad way. But they chose to do this, so it's hey, that's their choice. String quoting. String quoting, for the most part, is actually the same between Perl and PHP, except we have some additional abilities. We can do Q. Okay, and that would be single quoting, QQ, and it'll be double quoting. So this is so that Q and double Q, that's multi-line quoting. Q and QQ, that's multi-line quoting itself. So you can actually quote, I don't know, like uh, five paragraphs of Shakespeare right there on a the spot. Okay, and that's you know that's it'll work, and it'll work verbatim. Okay, in UK, okay, within other language, well, it's a bit harder to do that in PHP. Yes, you can use the here doc, but here docs is not quite as succinct. Actually, I think I made a mistake in terms of number of less than signs. Yeah, I should have checked my slide earlier. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes, it's. Um, I'm kind of embarrassing myself today. Yes. Uh, uh, okay. Comparison operators. Now, um, Pro has comparison operators that are numerical, and um, and alphabetical. Okay, it's one of those things that Pro actually has chosen to do. It may not be so beginner friendly, but this is the way that Pro has actually done it. PHP, what they do is that they convert everything, um, convert everything. So it's, you know, so it's actually more of a numerical sort of comparison itself. Less than, greater than, equal. If you really want to compare, if something is really equal to another thing, you have to use triple equal, or Bang, triple equal. Okay, it's, um, that'll probably be more useful if, say, you're trying to compare zero versus um, a string with a zero in it. Okay, in that case, then you have to use, um, you have to use the triple equal itself. It's, it's a little bit of an odd side, but PHP people are willing to, um, willing to put up with it simply because it's, it presents a more unified set of comparison operators. Okay. Okay. So anyway, let's. Uh, okay, have some final thoughts. Okay, Perl not quite as easy as PHP, but it's pretty powerful. PHP it's a bit limiting, but it's still good. Okay. So anyway, this is actually the end of our present. Actually, I think I got done with this a little quicker than I first thought. Okay. But if you guys are wondering about my slides or stuff like that, I should actually show you. Let's see if I can actually bring this up. Okay, hang on for a second. Okay, I don't think you get many people who actually make um, uh, make this sort of stuff for their presentation. Okay, so we got, I have the slides, but I also have an alternative way. Uh, no, okay, hang on. Yeah, I should have bookmarked this. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, it's not working. Okay. Yeah, uh, okay. Sorry about that. Okay, what I did actually do is I present actually developed some web pages that correspond to most of the slides I actually developed over here. Um, I'll have to publish those at some point. Okay. Okay, now this point here, uh, let's see. Okay, now that I'm actually done with my main presentation, do I have any questions? Okay. Does anyone want to program? Yeah. 
Okay, so now that we're acquainted with PHP, yeah. where are we going to use it in getting jobs? Hmm? What's <laughs> yes. Okay. How do we use it in terms of getting a job? Okay. That's a good question. Okay. Well, let me tell you about my experience. So, okay. If you, if you have a really good feel for pro web development, if you actually practice it quite a bit, um, you can actually, um, I mean, if you have some pro, I mean, some solid pro stuff, um, you know, for, you know, in terms of web pages, in terms of websites, you can, Pick a PHP within the eight hours. That doesn't mean that people will believe you can program PHP. Okay, it's it's kind of weird. It's um, you can actually come up with a nice little demo and so and it does the basic PHP stuff, but they still don't trust you. Okay, it's um, you know they will actually kind of look at you and say, well I don't know. It's like should I actually hire you? It's like we're looking for a hundred thousand dollar you know web developer. You know it's like we want to pay we want to pay a web developer a hundred thousand dollars. Okay, do you, can you program PHP? Okay, that's kind of, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to kind of get over that initial hurdle. I mean, you, can, you, have the, um, you have the skills as a pro web developer. Okay, but to convince someone that you can do pro web development, it's, it's a bit more challenging. Um, okay, it's, but there's nothing really separating you from actually doing PHP web development. You know Perl, you can do PHP. Um, you can apply for a number of jobs until you find someone somewhere along the lines who will actually, actually, um, who actually take your word for it. Um, I suppose you can maybe do some um, small PHP web projects for, I don't know, for free or something like that, just to prove to someone. Um, I think web database is the way to go. Most of us require some database, MySQL on the back end, and PHP on the back So that's a good combination. <coughs> No, I'm actually trying to access local files on local only. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Unfortunately, it, yeah, unfortunately, it's uh, uh, Firefox has some issues, so I'm going to try another web browser. Yeah. More likely. Okay, hang on, I think I almost got it. What, what I find is a lot of uh, PHP applications are available which are uh, not scalable. And most of the software and services people, they want to use the ready-made stuff to get the uh, coding and then try to play with it for multi-tenant, uh, those kind of situations. So that's where the uh, tier, which is the uh, HTML tier and they have this tier, they need to be separated because they want to load balance with multiple copies of it. Mm -hmm. And so there is a huge demand for that. And software as well to get an application, okay, like OpenEM. It's an application for uh, what you call the electronic medical device. So it's a huge one. You can apply it for distributing to n number of uh, hospitals or locations. Now, how do you go? The database is going to be single database, we cannot do it. So, this is where the opportunity is. Somebody can isolate the front end <coughs> because they, when they are written, they are not written very well in the sense that you can, they were not thinking about it. So, now we have to distribute just replication model in the back end because we have to do load balance in the front and scale out in the back and yet have multiple copies in the like uh, object uh, management in a distributed. So that's it. A lot of forms. That's what I knew that I've seen. Yes, there's actually a fair, yeah, I do have to say that with... Um, so, another one I give, yeah. like for education. Uh, like open EMR is for healthcare, right? So there is one... Uh, it's for education, second, similarly, there is no. Hmm. And that you can. So, 
the various industry solutions that are there, which are easy to get into. They are like education segment is easy because it's not like online. Everybody wants to get online courses, and it's a free move, right? Like MIT has started. Right? So everybody wants online. So that's one thing. I think. Yeah, so it's a <clears throat> okay. Yeah, so you see, there, there, are, there's a number of opportunities out there, and um, I have to say that with a lot of what's been mentioned. Yeah, the name of that is Moodle. 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 M O D L E. Ah, Moodle. Yes. Moodle is popular in education. No, but you have to have it. If you say that I'm going to announce today a course on <coughs> software defined network, and there will be millions of people coming to that. Now, how do I skip? So they take the Moodle, multiple Moodles they import and then they will try to coordinate and, and that's again good for jobs. Yes, that's right. There's a lot of these jobs in which you're trying to deal with the scalability a lot. It's, um, I do have to say that the um, some of these things actually, it's it's a bit more than coding itself. It deals with a lot of the issues of databases, uh, architecture, system administration, um, I have to say that a um, um, lot of coding jobs, sometimes it's not just coding, but it actually involves a lot more than just pure coding itself. I mean, there used to be in which you could just write just lines of, yeah, lines of code and that's it. But nowadays you have to be aware of a lot of other issues because people have these different demands. Okay, I want to have Moodle operational for a campus of 40,000 students. Okay, yeah, it gives anybody a heart attack when you, when you get at that level. Um, especially when the original software wasn't designed to be that scalable. <laughs> and you're stuck there and people were people breathing down your neck and asking, so when is it going to be done? <laughs> Classes are starting. Okay. It's like, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of an interesting situation. There's a, there's a lot of work there. Um, there's a lot of work making, uh, making stuff uh, more scalable. There's, there's actually opportunities out there. Most of them end up in short-term solutions to start with, just to make sure that you run it on one and server and then make sure database is replicable and separate out the top tier with the multiple web load balancers and like that in the black space or wherever uh, or it could be some Amazon anywhere. But easy stuff to get it working and redesigning is a whole for separate. So yes. pure cloud application but this, this is a quick, dirty method of getting it done somehow by segregating the layers and working on it. Because most of them need PHP coding. So if you don't know PHP, you don't get it. Yes, there is a, I say it's, okay, there's a lot of scalability stuff. There's a, there's a distinct interest in it. Um, okay, and you better be actually uh, up to snuff in terms of your MySQL understanding. Yeah, um, well, yes, that's right. That's why MySQL also, what I found is MariaDB is a replacement. And then you use MariaDB update, which will get you to the couch or one of those uh, no secrets. Really? Yeah. Okay. Cassandra, Cassandra. Oh, Cassandra. Yeah. Really? So wow. That's so the easiest way I can think of is keep the PHP, just you know PHP. Get the MySQL, how to drop in replacement of MariaDB and put it, push it into Cassandra. Yes, because I, I thought Cassandra itself is um, um, it's different enough from MySQL that you can't really use the MariaDB is providing a MySQL interface for everything. All of this. MariaDB is originally in writer of MySQL who went to I think Spain, I don't know some European countries. And once this MySQL was bought by Sun and Oracle. He has moved yeah. out and then he started. Yeah. No, okay. So Maria DB is means by which you can use the MySQL query API. That's and it's abstracted from say uh, a Cassandra database that's underlying it. No, no. What they have done is they have written for the API, which is exactly like MySQL. Button. Once you do that at 5.5 version, and then they have a version 10, which is when you upgrade it, it will take care of it. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay. So you have a phased version. So a lot of people can say that I need PhD after going through this, I hope. And then now you get into that for a vertical solution, there is a lot of opportunities. Hmm. Okay. Well, I have to say that these skills themselves are, I have, they're pretty universal across the board, no matter which programming language you use. So, MySQL, understand that? It will take you, it's actually pretty handy. You know, some uh, NoSQL as well, that's pretty handy as well. Um, okay, yeah, the, the whole in, endeavor of being a developer is, it's, it's a bit complicated in terms of the number of skills you have to pick up to be, you know, truly a senior level developer. Um, but starting out, um, you know, yes, you can actually still, you can actually do some PHP and actually it's kind of interesting. It's I've actually seen seen people who actually do odd job PHP for things like you know restaurants and um, uh, maybe small databases and stuff like that. And yeah, it's, they don't pay a whole lot, but uh, but if someone needs an address book for the website, then it's okay. It's pretty reasonable. Okay, it's a little bit. It's you know you can gain a little bit of experience, do a little bit of practice, get uh, you know you get that make that client happy. Um, you sometimes see those opportunities. Um, it may not be, Craigslist has a tendency of, of advertising a lot of these like, you know, tens of thousands of dollar type of salary things. But at the same time, there's also this, almost like a cottage industry of like these smaller sort of uh, jobs that take like a couple hours or some such like that. Okay, well, it's, it's something. It's, I guess you can kind of uh, earn enough money to kind of feed yourself for a few days. Okay, and it's um, it's, it's good experience. Okay. Um, any other any other questions? Oh, actually, uh, yeah, we do have this. Um, I do. Uh, sorry about that. I, I did actually, you know, have a chance to use another browser, and right now we can actually see the web page uh, that actually kind of developed. It's. Uh, I have to say that this stuff, PHP versus Perl, I developed this set of web pages about a couple of years ago. So, most of the slides that you saw me present, most of them are actually based off of the material from these set of web pages. I didn't actually publish this set of web pages um, simply because I, at that time I felt that it was a little too incomplete. It's still a bit incomplete right now. There's a, okay, but now that I'm actually coming back to it, I kind of realized that even though it's kind of incomplete, it's still actually pretty good. It's because um, well, everything I described, everything I described in my presentation, yes, my presentation actually covered a lot of stuff, but even that's actually incomplete. There's a few things I didn't actually cover within my presentation, but, but I think the most important thing is that it's actually useful. We can get a sense for uh, for two different languages and a relationship between, between those two different languages. Um, from that perspective, it's actually reasonably good. I should actually publish this at some point. I and mean, we go through most of the stuff we talked about, things like you got the array stuff and... Oh, yeah, actually, I'm sorry. Um, we do have array slices. This is actually probably one of the slides maybe I should put in my presentation. Um, Perl has array slices. PHP, it doesn't quite do a very good job of. Uh, <laughs> okay, there, okay, yeah, so um, we have things like, we talk about strict mode here. We talk about the comment syntax, regular expressions, name parameters. Uh, let's see, output buffering. Oops, nothing written there yet. Yes. Well, also include file. Could you click on, on that one? I, I wonder how PHP people use that. I mean, is it like a Perl module with just a bunch of functions? Or is it actually just, you're doing code, include this PHP file, so now do the code in that file and then come back? Well, actually I should, um, I should modify my statement. The, the include file thing, that was actually one specific example of how include files work. It's actually a general purpose means of including any type of PHP code. Okay, you can actually you can actually use the include file like it's a SSI include, you know, where you bring in HTML. But a lot of other times when using the include file ability, uh, you're trying to bring in some some set of functions. You know, maybe it's like to calculate a Fourier transform or matrix operation or uh, open a socket or something like that. So it's a bit more general purpose. Um, also with the include file in. PHP, there is actually four ways to include file, which is kind of an odd thing. So it's, um, okay, it's uh, in, in order to prevent people from, actually, I'm not sure if you can see this from where you are. Require once over here? Okay, that, 
the part there about once, that means um, if it's been if it's been included before, do not include it again. That's so you don't get uh, you don't redeclare the same function a second time. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Okay. <laughs> yes, in Perl there is there is multiple ways to do the same thing. Yes, that's true. Um, and also that thing with require. Um, okay, in the examples I used, it mentioned include. There is something similar which is called require. The difference between require and include is that require throws an error if you didn't do it right. The include, it just throws a warning. Sometimes you want to have the error. Okay, especially when you're doing development. Yes, that's right. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I should mention that because of the fact that uh, for a long time, Pro, sorry, PHP did not have namespaces. The the growth of the live growth of publicly available source code for PHP has been rather anemic because people can publish PHP code on their web pages, but the problem is that likely the function name they chose conflicts with another function name made by someone else. No namespaces makes these function name collisions an inevitability. It's quite a pain to deal with. I, I remember those days doing PHP. It's, it was just tough. <laughs> There's no way around it. You just got to live with it. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Any other questions? Okay. Okay. Well, okay. I think that concludes our session of PHP versus Perl. Okay. I am hope it's actually been useful for useful for the people here. Okay, it's, I hope you won't bar, I hope you don't turn me a heretic for actually doing this presentation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think that's the, one of the things we need to be looking at because uh, the other evening one of my was explaining to me that I write code uh, in a Java style because I believe that, no, 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 I don't want to know how you made that object. You make the object and that's on you. And so the tricks that we learn from other languages, and we should just keep asking, is this a good thing? Should we be using this? And to the other is, all you need is a simple web page. PHP is good enough. It's a personal web page. Just do it. And move on to the next one. By the way, that's not Java style. That's encapsulation.